Welcome back to Africa 54. I'm Vincent McCorry in Washington. Now, the world's la last male northern wife rhino died on March the 19th after age-related complications. Researchers announced Tuesday saying this, he stole the heart of many with his dignity and strength. And northern white rhinos once roamed parts of Chad, Sudan, Uganda, Congo, and the Central African Republic. And they were particularly vulnerable because of the armed conflict that have swept the region over the, the decades. And viewers, Maria Diallo reports. The 45-year-old rhino was euthanized after his condition rapidly deteriorated, said Stephen Gulu. Sunday morning, he completely was unable to wake up. His left hind foot uh, gave in completely. He was uh, unable to support himself on it and he was not able now to rise. Earlier this month, as his condition worsened, rangers caring for him expressed sadness over his imminent death. I'm feeling so sad about him. I know him very well since I started working with him. He's a very gentle rhino. Two years ago, Zakaria Mutai, one of his keepers, told the Associated Press that because of human failure, animals like these might be extinct. People used to kill rhinos because of their horns. And many people have been uh, believing that uh, they use as medicine, but it doesn't cure anyone at all. So, but what we are doing is that uh, we are creating awareness to everyone to see the importance of uh, conserving such kind of animals. Named after his country of birth, Sudan was the world's last male northern rhino. In recent weeks, another rhino keeper who cared for him at the Czech Republic Zoo before he was transferred to Kenya in 2009 said he was special. None of my friends and I have ever dealt with any direct aggression or him trying to attack us. Usually, it was quite easy to interact with him. It was almost remarkable. And after decades of killing by poachers, the rhino had been part of an ambitious effort to save the subspecies from extinction with the help of two surviving females, Sudan's daughter Najin and his granddaughter Fatou. The only hope now lies in developing in vitro fertilization techniques. The death of Sudan actually shows that clearly, that if we don't take care of what we have, we will definitely continue to lose it and particularly lose other species that are currently endangered. Sudan was considered a celebrity, attracting thousands of visitors. Last year, he was listed as the most eligible bachelor in the world on the Tinder dating app in a fundraising effort. Maria Madialu, VOA News. Books, not guns. That's the message. A book club in Misrata, Libya's coastal city, is passing across with a books exhibition in crates once used to store deadly weapons and ammunition. Those behind it are hoping to change the memories of war the containers present. Take a look. Ammunition boxes, once used to store dangerous weapons during the conflict in Libya, are now being put into better use. With the aim of reviving the famous saying, the pen is mightier than the sword, a book club in Mesrata is using the old weapon crates to organize book fairs. Founded in 2016, I Read Book Club is converting crates to sources of knowledge. I Read Book Club is a club dedicated to reading books for people of all ages, old and young. One of the ideas that the club adopted a while back is to organize small book fairs out in the streets or in public places, displaying them in ammunition boxes. According to the founder of the book club, the idea behind the use of these boxes is symbolic of replacing years of violence with a more beneficial habit of reading. Since the 2011 uprising that toppled longtime leader Muammar Gaddafi, there has been instability in Libya. Two rival governments and sporadic factional and tribal fighting have left the country seven years on still mired in conflict. The internationally recognized government of national accord in Tripoli is still unable to unite all factions together and gun battles in the country's main cities can go on for days, sometimes even weeks. The book club's work carries a lot of importance and brings a breath of fresh air. 
Displaying books in ammunition boxes is a new idea, at least in our country, and it carries a very important message, a message that calls for reading instead of war. It is an important message in the midst of the circumstances our country is facing, from security tensions to how no voice is louder than the voice of war. What this book club is trying to do is to prove that books are louder than the battle sounds, that words are stronger than bullets, and that books are more important than guns. The book club has a hundred members who collect books through donations and profits made from the book fairs which they reinvest into buying more books. Well, you're watching Africa 54, I'm Vincent McCorry in Washington. Uh, Daichi Yamamoto is a Japanese photographer who has called Senegal home for the past two years. His work captures local fashion and has helped launch the careers of several Senegalese fashion models. For VOA, Chika Udua has the story from Deka. Uh, on the with every snap, Japan native Daiichi Yamamoto is reminded about what he loves most about Senegal. He moved here from New York City two years ago. When I initially came to Senegal, I was very impressed with the colorful uh, you know, dresses, which, you know, in the U.S., people, you know, when I came, like, people said, dressing up like that and dress. But then the, here, people wear as a culture, and I was very impressed of those, you know, rich culture. But I also, um, like when it comes to the photography in Africa, I see a lot of, uh, you know, poverty, um, some like kind of negative images of Africa. But then, you know, I just wanted to focus on a positive side of Africa. This colorful dress and the fashion it just really, uh, you know, caught my heart. All right. All right. A self-taught photographer, Yamamoto has carved a niche for himself with aspiring local models. His Instagram feed is a colorful collage of looks that has also drawn attention to the Senegalese fashion scene. Awa Claudine has dreamed of being an international model since she was seven years old. She says Yamamoto's background gives him a unique aesthetic. Daichi is a professional photographer, and he's also a foreigner. He has introduced to us a new culture and has also used his experience to make me better. And it's not just the models who benefit from the exposure. Makeup artist Jessica Manuela says he was the only photographer who gave her a chance. Designer Mati Fowl is new in the fashion industry. She says Yamamoto took a risk using her clothes for his shoots. Really helped me from the beginning by giving me strength, really, and confidence. Because every time I hear him, he's like, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have, he really motivates me. 23-year-old Aisha Gui is one of Yamamoto's most successful models. She recently relocated to Europe to further her career. She spoke to VOA via FaceTime from Milan, where she is walking the catwalks for Fashion Week. My agency in Milan here, they use the, the uh, picture I took with Dechi, uh, uh, has composites you know, uh, composite to go to the casting, something like that. Uh, Back in Senegal, Yamamoto is coaching a first-timer to pose with ease and grace. Yo, yo, hey, no. Chika Odua for VOA News, Dakar. Yeah, Well, and that's our show for today. You can also visit us online at voaafrica.com. I'm Vincent McCord in Washington. Chamberlain also has our last word from Lagos. Thank you, Vincent. We look forward to bringing you another show next week. ChannelsTV.com is your source for news, sports, and other programming. I'm Chamberlain Nussor. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.